Good evening. Um, welcome to the Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment and Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority regular meeting agenda. Today's day is Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. The hour, the time is 5:35, and I will call. Roll call. I am here. Mayor Pro Tem Camilo Garcia. Here. Council Member Raul Ureña. Here. Council Member Gloria Romo. Here. Council Member Oscar Ariel Fernandez. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum and we have our city manager, our city attorney is here. Um, and we have our clerk. So this is a closed session. Uh, call to order due to the declaration of emergency. This meeting is being held pursuant to AB 361 approved by Governor of California on September 16, 2021. And some or all the city council members may participate in this meeting by teleconference. Pursuant to Imperial County Public Health Department guidelines, city council meetings are now open for public attendance at 100% capacity of the council chambers. Public participation will continue to be available in the following ways. Members of the public are encouraged to watch the meeting via live stream at HTTP Community Spectrum .org Live at 6.30 p.m. or via the Calexico City Hall Facebook page at www.facebook.com City of Calexico CA. Members of the public will be able to make public comments in the following ways. In person comments, um, no. submit public comments via email by 2 p.m. on Wednesday, April 20, 2022 through our clerk, clerk G.G. Garcia at Calexico CA GOV or via fax the 760-766-2103. You may make public comments via Zoom from a PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or Android device. Please click the URL to log in. Our telephone number is 1-666-9900-6833. The webinar ID number is 827-9707-3750. And the passcode is 534-186. Do, do we have any public comments? No, sir. Or, Adjourn to closed session, a closed session of Studio Calexico, Calexico Community Development Agency, Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority may be held in accordance to, with state law, which may include, but is not limited to, the following types of items, personal matters, labor negotiations, security matters, providing instructions to real property negotiations, and conference with legal counsel regarding pending litigation. The closed session will be held in the City Hall Conference Room, located at 608 Hebrew Avenue, Calexico, California. Any public comments on closed session items will be taken before the closed session. Any required announcements or discussion of closed session items or actions following the closed session will be made in the City Council Chambers at 608 Hebrew Avenue, Calexico, California. Um, and there's no public comments, so we'll go ahead and adjourn to our closed session at 640. <coughs> Five four. Five four. Five four, Good, evening. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority. This is a regular meeting session. It is 6.38 p.m. And I'll call the meeting to order and I'll take the roll call. Mayor Javier Moreno is here present. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Camilo Garcia. Here. Council Member Raul Reña. Here. Council Member Gloria Romo. Here. Council Member Rosario La Fernandez. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. And uh, Ms. Sureña, can you help us with this uh, mission statement, please? City of Calexico mission statement. Together, Together we pledge to provide a mission services in a courteous and respectful manner to improve the quality of life for all in our unique border community. And Mrs. Romo, can you help us with the invocation? Yes, thank you. Señor Jesús, gracias por este día. 
Gracias por darnos la oportunidad de estar aquí presentes en esta reunión regular. Ilumínanos, ampáranos, rígenos y gobiernanos. Te lo pedimos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Our next item is closed session announcement by the council. Yeah, direction was given, but no reportable actions were taken. Thank you. Thank you, council. Our next item is approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Romo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nobody? Okay. And now the next item is the presentations. The first one we have is the proclamation celebrating National Library Week proclamation April 4th to 7th, 2022. And I'll go ahead and start it. Whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that foster a sense of connection and build community. Whereas libraries connect people to technology, providing access to broadband internet, computers, and training that are critical for assess assessing education and employment opportunities. Whereas libraries offer opportunities for everyone to connect with new ideas and become their best selves through access to multimedia content, programs, and classes in addition to books. Whereas today's libraries and their services extend far beyond the four walls of a building and everyone is welcome to use their resources. Whereas in times of crisis, libraries and library professionals play an invaluable role in supporting their communities, both in person and virtually. Whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of access for all. Whereas to adapt to our changing world, libraries are expanding their resources and continue to meet the needs of their patrons. Libraries, whereas libraries have long served as a trusted and treasured institution for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual ori orientation, gender, ident identity, or socioeconomic status. Whereas libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all. Whereas libraries, librarians and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, be resolved that Javier Moreno Calexico Mayor proclaim National Library Week April the 3rd to the 9th, 2002. 22. During this week, I encourage all residents to connect with their library by visiting online or in person to access resources and services. Are you missing a page? Now, therefore, uh, be resolved that I have your mother, Mayor Pedro Calexico, hereby proclaim this week, April the 3rd to the 9th, 2002, National Library Week. Uh, in witness whereof, I hereunto to affix my signature and official seal of the city of Calexico on the 6th of day of April, 2022. All right, city manager, uh, mayor. I'll accept that for the library. I know our librarian is out celebrating uh, National Library Week for the whole week. Oh, okay. So I'll make sure I get that to her. No, okay. Just let her know that I received my library card. You know, oh. renewal. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make sure to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Our next item is proclamation celebrating National Public Safety Telecommunications Week, April the 10th to the 16th, 2022.
whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is crit critical to the uh, protection of life and preservation of property, and whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is depending upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the public safety communication centers throughout Imperial County and whereas professional public safety telecommunicators are a vital link between citizens and victims and are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. Whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And? Whereas public uh, safety telecommunicators from all communication centers from Imperial County have uh, contributed uh, substantially to the apprehension of criminals uh, su suppression of fires and treatment of patients and patients. Whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compensation, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the last past year. Now, therefore, I, Javier Moreno, Mayor of the City of Calexico, do hereby proclaim the week of April the 10th to April 16th, 2022, to be the National Public Safety Telecommunications Week in Calexico, in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our citizens and ci our city and citizens safe. In witness thereof, I hereunto to affix my signature and official seal of the city of Calexico on this, on the 20th day of April, 2022. <clears throat> And, and Mayor, just like the Library Week one, I will also take this uh, and provide that to the public safety uh, people. Okay, thank you. Sure. And our next uh, item is the proclamation for Commemorating the hundred, is it a hundred and fourteenth, right? A hundredth. A hundredth. A hundredth. Anniversary. Anniversary of Sierra. Uh, I'm sorry. Rotary anniversary Club. of Calexico Rotary Club. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll start with uh, whereas Calexico Rotary Club, founded on April first, nineteen twenty-two, in Calexico. California in part of the largest nonprofit service organization and whereas Calexico Rotary is comprised of professional and business leaders that are committed to the advancement of the city and whereas the Rotary model is service of self inspires members to provide humanitarian service encourage high ethical standards and promote goodwill and peace in, in the world and whereas the Calexico Rotary Club has collaborated with Rotary Clubs in Mexicali Baja California to establish sustainable projects on both sides of the border and whereas the Calexico Rotary successfully completed a project to buy, rebuild and outfit a motor home as a mobile medical clinic and donated, donated it to Universidad Autónoma de Baja California, UABC and remains in use today and whereas each year the Calexico Rotary organizes the Crab Crack Dinner that is attended by many Imperial Valley residents each year to support raising funds for club projects. And whereas Calexico Rotary continues to serve the community by supporting local organizations and school activities that need it. And? Whereas the Calexico Rotary Club will continue to support the city by doing more community service and work on projects that benefits the youth and families of our city and Whereas Calexico Rotary's rich history will continue for generations to come and inspire residents to get involved with their city and promote community pride. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, Javier Moreno, Mayor of the City of Calexico, hereby proclaim the month of April 2020, 2020, 2020 I'm sorry, 2022 as Rotary Month and congratulate the Calexico Rotary Club 
for a century of service and your work on behalf of the community and the world. In witness thereof, I hereunto to affix my signature and official seal of the Cedar Plexico on this 20th day of April of 2022. And does anybody here receive that? I guess not, but I'm a Rotarian, also became one just about a month or so ago. So I guess I can get it on behalf of the, the club. And in fact, today they're celebrating that 100 uh, year anniversary just on the, I mean, a few doors down at the Women's Improvement Club. I think they're having a potluck, so maybe after our meeting oh. we can head down there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no, I know that we're going to have a potluck, but I don't know if they're going to have enough for all of us. So, okay. <laughs> But uh, j just to say that um, they yeah. actually had a great celebration. Uh, you know, a couple of months ago, they uh, hosted the international president, uh, Mr. Uh, Meta Shaker out of uh, um, India. And uh, uh, it was a celebration over at the, at the queue where all the Rotary Clubs from uh, the Imperial Valley and Yuma uh, hosted the president. And it was, it was a huge deal because I think it was one of the first times, if not the first time, that the international president came down to visit our, our, our area. And uh, you know, everybody was very festive. They um, actually uh, did a list of accomplishments. And I know that also, as far as the, the Calexico Club, uh, just last year uh, was recognized as the best small club for the San Diego and Imperial regions so that goes to show you of the type of work that they have been involved. And it has been um, a few people, a few very dedicated individuals doing what they say, you know, service above self. So congratulations to all of them. And uh, for 100 years more, and many more, actually. Thank you. Thank Mayor, you, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I'd like to add one thing, and it's something that uh, Councilman Garcia forgot to mention. And what that is, is his son is, was also, I want to say, the, the governor for the Southern California Rotary for the Teens. And that goes to show that the Rotary Club we have right now is doing so well that they even have the, the ones for the uh, teens. And his son was also for the whole Southern California. That's a big step right there. So the Rotary is doing good because they're also teaching our, our young adults. Thank you, I think City Manager of Yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank you. you thank go. you, Mayor. So, well, uh, a picture with us. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You know, Mr. So Gonzalez, take, take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Shula. Thank, thank you. Photographer de lujo, eh? Sí. Thank you. Ahorita me tomas otra. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think it'd be appropriate to go ahead with the proclamation first, yeah. mm -hmm. and then after the proclamation, yeah. we can give the opportunity to speak. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the next, uh, it will be the proclamation celebrating 2022 Earth and Arbor Day Awareness, April 30th, 2022. Whereas in nature, nothing exists alone. And the global community now faces extraordinary challenges with global health, safety, and environment issues. As all living things have an intrinsic value and each plays a unique role in the complex web of life that affect all people, regardless of race, gender, income, age, or geography. And whereas Earth Day is on April 22nd, 2022, and Arbor Day is on April 29th, 2022, and both special dates provide a special time to draw people together in appreciation of the mutual home, planet Earth, and... Whereas Earth Day and Arbor Day inspire many people and organizations to host environmental events that help raise awareness of environmental issues, human beings have irrevocably distressed the balance of nature, which are having far-reaching impacts in the health and safety of the communities that we live uh, today, we live and play. And whereas Calexico takes great interest in the quality of our nat natural environment, in particular the planting of trees, which are so valuable for preserving the beauty of our community, tree trees enri enrich our lives by increasing property value, enhancing the economic vitality business areas, beautifying our streets, parks, and neighborhoods, 
Trees also reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, wildlife and Whereas the Calexico Earth Day and Arbor Day Awareness Day on Saturday, April 30th, 2022 is to emphasize the importance of preserving our natural environments through collaborations and partnerships by encouraging and supporting efforts that create healthier families, safer neighborhoods, more eco-friendly environments that enrich the quality of life for all uh, in our border city, the gateway to Mexico. Whereas the Calexico Air and Arbor Day 2002 event will be celebrated in, on, in honor of former local les, legendary youth boxing coach Ignacio Pop Sanchez, who dedicated his life to mentoring and coaching thousands of kids throughout the Imperial Valley boxing gyms. Ignacio Pop Sanchez made a true difference and thousands of you live in helping market our neighborhoods uh, healthier, safer, greener, better places to play and live and whereas Mexico recognizes the collaboration effect of public agencies, community organizations, local groups, businesses, and individuals that take part in these grassroots volunteers' efforts of citizens Now, therefore, be resolved that I, having one and a mayor of the city of Calexico, do hereby proclaim Saturday, April 30th, 2022, as Calexico's Earth and Arbor Day Awareness in Calexico, California, in memory of Ignacio Pops Sanchez, and urge all citizens, government, agencies, public and private institutions, community organizations, and business, businesses to support awareness and to please join the community fair and the continued efforts in making healthier, safer, and more eco-friendlier Calexico. In witness whereof, I hear unto a fixed mix signature and official seal of the seat of Calexico on this, uh, the 20th day of April, 2022. And Mr. Gonzalez, is he gonna say something? Mr. Gonzalez, are you gonna receive the... Uh, both of them. Oh, both of them, okay. Do you wanna say something first or? Yeah, I'm going to say something for you. Okay. <laughs> well, my name is Javier Gonzalez. Uh, uh, I've been leading the Calexico uh, Health and Safety Community Coalition for some time. We've done uh, several events. But this is an event we've been bringing up, and we're not going to let it go. We want it to be an annual event. Calexico does need a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, this attention in this area. It's, it, it, it's a Dia El Niño, but we're still not focused on El Dia El Niño. It's uh, we're focusing on Earth and Arbor Day. You know, Calexico needs a lot of trees, a lot of trees, and uh, we're going to be doing it every year. The, the the children's fair was moved to the first week or second week of the uh, of the month, so we're going to be able to hold it every year. Every year we're going to dedicate something. We've been working with Council Member Romo this year. is for Ignacio. He did a lot for the kids. He wanted safer, cleaner communities. Next year we plan to celebrate it with the city's 15th anniversary. That's the plan. So everybody's welcome. Uh, we expect our mayor to get some work there. Our county supervisor, our assembly member Garcia, the office will be there. And like always, um, McGraw and Sparky will be flying in and they'll be meet, met, met at the park by uh, Dippy Duck. So we hope that a lot of people be there and we're trying to promote it. But like I said, this is a, a, the beginning of an annual event that we plan. And we thank you all for your support. We thank the, the city manager, the fire chief, the public works, everybody, this is for the community. I mean, it's a lot of work for us, but, but we don't want to let it go. And we thank you very much for acknowledging it. Uh, I, I, IID will be giving out free trees. That's what we're working. First, they wanted to give a voucher, $25 voucher. No, they're going to come to your house and plant a tree. And that's what we're working. Every single house in Imperial Valley should get a tree soon by, by the IID. So we're proud of it. We're proud of it at the beginning. And we need a lot of trees in Calexico. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. Uh, place and time. Oh yes. The, well, this this event was always held at the Kennedy Garden because it, it was a sanctioned uh, neighborhood watch. But we're moving it to the Cordova Park. Cordova Park is dedicated to a fallen officer, and, and it's a 
better place to hold it because it's bigger, it's, it's open. So it's Saturday, April 30th from 9 to 1 p.m. We'll have the Calexico Little League and the Calexico Boxing Clubs um, be selling food and, and, and drinks. And the main event will be the kids boxing against crime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosales. Who, you're going to receive this? Okay. You want to say something? Okay, that, that concludes our proclamations. We now have item number five, presentation by IED, Water Department Guardian Detention Basis in Calexico. Uh, Javier Gonzalez, IED Division 4. I want to apologize that uh, we couldn't do it this week, but uh, we're committed. Our water manager was, uh, was scheduled to be here. He couldn't be here. Uh, it was my, my mistake. I, I was very busy and I forgot to remind him, to be honest. I don't want to say much, but I just want to say that uh, at least I'm very committed that IED helps with the retention basis, they they've been trying um, to blame it on someone else, but we're all we're all together. I, I see it as we're one community together, and uh, they got the more resources, and they should be able to help more. Um, they've been trying to clean up the the drain, but it's a small drain. What they did is they asked the farmers that they're they getting on, on the proper ranches not to irrigate all at once, or they were gonna close the water, so they're irrigating one at a time, one at a time. So the farmers, they're not gonna like it, but they told them if you irrigate everything at once, it's gonna plug the, the drain. It's a drain that runs all the way from the border to the canal and then all the way to B.B. Williams. So yeah, we're gonna schedule it for next week and he should be able he, to be, be here and tell us a little bit more what they're doing, what they can do, and what is their responsibility as, as IID. And that's my commitment to, to the community to I mean, to bring, bring the, um, the experts at ID and let them inform the community of what is the problem. Because we can't continue to have the, the, our, our retention basins or parks fill up with water, water that is from the irrigation that has pesticides. That, that is just not unacceptable. So they should be here next meeting. Next meeting, not next week. Next meeting, to be honest, yeah, next meeting. Yeah, it did my bad idea. I, he, he was going to be here and I forgot to remind him, to be honest. Okay. He's been very busy. But we'll have an next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. And I move it on to item number six, presentation by Heffern and Memorial Health Care District. We, we have nobody representing the Heffern and Board at this time, so we're going to have to skip uh, the presentation okay. number six. Thank you. And we do have the bi-weekly COVID-19 update presentation. Uh, your fire chief is not present today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So the update for COVID-19, um, I'm going to start off with the numbers here. We had a total of affected people is 13,662 since the pandemic has started. Uh, out of that number of people that have recovered, which is always the best number for me, is a 13,368. Today I am super happy and proud to say that in the city of Calexico we have 11, only 11 people that are uh, that have the disease right now, or the illness, I'm sorry, the illness. And at the end of all this is 283 people have passed away. Uh, another good thing about COVID-19 is that we're in collaboration with the state and the county. We're going to be offering a vaccine clinic for children under the age of 12. We're going to do that. Uh, May 10th is the, is the opportunity for them to get their first dose. May 31st would be their second dose. We're gonna hold this clinic at the Women's Improvement Club and more information will follow on our website as soon as we get all the things uh, situated here. And that's your COVID-19. What was the age group? Uh, we're, we're looking for children under the age of 12. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
like the city manager show you that. Now we have two announcements. These proceedings may be viewed in the, on the City of Calexico website at www.calexico.ca.gov the Friday following the City Council meeting. Community officer with Mayor Moreno will be held by appointment. Please contact the City Clerk's Office at 760-768-2102 to schedule an appointment. Next item is we have the public comments and public appearances. Note, not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. However, if the item you wish to comment on is on the consent agenda, please comment now. The Mayor will recognize you and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the Council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. The City Council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. And we have two public comments. We have the first one is Mr. Javier Gonzalez. Garden Neighborhood Watch. We've been in the official Neighborhood Watch community for 25 years. And um, we're here to uh, in, co in confidential, in confidential fair. Every year we're also going to do something. This year, what we're going to do, we're going to replace all the, na the Neighborhood Watch signs in Kennedy Gardens. We have 30 of them. We just want to let you know we already informed our chief of police, our public works, that they're here. We're going to replace the ones that are, that are blighted, black, white. So we should have one for every street light in Kennedy Gardens. We're, we're hoping soon to have us uh, all the street lights in Kennedy. So this is something that should remind our mayor, because our mayor, he was the one to train us for this. It was about 25 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're, we told our chief of police that before McGrath leaves, he'll be here on Saturday the 30th, maybe on Monday, we want to do a ceremonial one where our chief of police, our, 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 our mayor, McGraw will install the first sign. We want to do it on, on Monday. We got one for every every. Hey, Kennedy Gardens is a, a, an official national neighborhood watch number 292417. We've been since 1994, official neighborhood watch community. And this is this is to coincide with the, with the fair, health and safety fair. So, Mr. Mayor, we're going to schedule with our chief of police and our city manager. Uh, this is going to be the first time we work with this chief of police, hopefully not the last one. We were talking to him a little bit earlier. And um, just uh, we're going to set it up before McGraw leaves town so we can do a, an official one. Thank you. Hold on, Mr. Gonzalo. I, I was taking notes and I heard my name, but I, I'm flattered. Thank you very much for that. I'm humbled for your, for your comments. And by the way, I was 19 years old when I did that sign. And yeah. moving forward, so I'm still here, thank God, that I'm still hey, here to serve my community. We're trying to find pictures of that little <laughs> church that was in Kennedy Garden. We, we held it. We held it in uh, that little church that was in the empty lot. We haven't been able to find a single photo. Maybe you have one, but we took pictures. You don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah. But it, was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to get out of neighbors, but we went street by street. And Mr. Our Mayor Moreno was the one that did it all. They, every single meeting with the neighbor. I remember neighbors fighting the neighbor because they parked in the front, front, in the front parking lot under their chain. We had a lot of problems like that. Neighbors didn't like each other, but this, this program brought us together. I, I hope you guys use the same company for those signs if they lasted that long. And, 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 to, worry, <laughs> and, to, and to be honest, uh, we, it came out in the newspaper. It, 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 crime was reduced 80%. Right. And uh, graffiti, you don't see graffiti in Kennedy Gardens anymore. And I think we seldom ever call the police. It was just neighbors working the neighbor. I was respecting the, the Cholitos, and, and, and Everybody respecting each other, and, and, and we got the job done. You might want to try the archives for a photo in the newspaper. Wow. You go to the right. Press, and you can find a picture of it in the archives. <clears throat> so anyway, we'll be giving uh, 29 women to our public works department, and, uh, and, and giving them a map where, where, where they should be located, because some of them are still good. And we'll be keeping one for the record and one for the event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Father. Thank you. To a mayor? Yeah. Yes. Quédate el pastel, no te vayas. Yeah. Yeah, ya mero, ya mero.
right, thank you. Uh, next uh, uh, public comments comes from uh, Carmen Estrada. Carmen. Carmen, este, en primer lugar te agradecemos a ti por estar al pendiente de los parques. Te agradezco eh, tus consejos, porque tienes mucho tiempo en esto. Hice un recorrido sábado y domingo por todos los parques. Tengo eh, que pasarle a, a mis compañeros las fotografías y nos dimos cuenta de que los 28 parques eran muy poquitos los que estaban verdes. Entonces, eh, la señora Lili ya está trabajando en eso, va a hacer un reporte 
pero sí, sí estoy de acuerdo contigo y aquí está el administrador y está Lili, que sí quiero una investigación de lo que pasó en, el, en, el, en ese parque, que por cuatro años el Gutiérrez estuvo cerrado y hay que ver qué fue lo que sucedió, por qué, por qué pasó lo que pasó. Entonces, para que la comunidad no se quede, ¿verdad?, con ese sentimiento. Es todo. Gracias, Mario. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Did you have something? I, you did? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Time is a city manager report, but also we uh, you're gonna make the announcements after for the, for the, uh, the anniversary uh, yes. cake thing. You wanna do it? Okay. Yeah, we can do that <clears throat> real quick on the city manager's report. We had the uh, state auditors here last week, they went through their first round uh, Monday to Friday. They were they left with all the information that they needed, they left in a, in a good mood, and they were giving us the initial, the initial word was they were content with what they were looking at they'll be back again uh, in May and we'll continue the, the progress that we're doing the announcement that we're, we're going to make is we have uh, if it's appropriate with you mayor we can take uh, a 10 15 minute break but we can have some cake in the rotunda and maybe you guys can say a couple of words in the celebration of our 100 114th year anniversary You're that's that's the end of my report. report. Yes. Done. Okay. All right. Um, you want to say something, Mr. Gonzalo? Or you want to eat cake now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take a small, uh, a short recess for that. Um, it's 7, uh, what, 17? <laughs> okay. oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, we're back from recess. Recording in progress. We're back from recess at 7. 35 and we are at the next item is that city council comments and reports of meetings attended i'll start here from my right i just want to say um, happy anniversary calexico okay that's all i have uh, yeah. dear to that and also i want to welcome uh you know well i don't know chief favila slash interim city manager Thank you on your first day. I mean, your first meeting, not your first day. Actually, your first right. day on the job was uh, actually before. So thank you for helping us out publicly. I want to thank you for taking on that, this task and stepping up. So looking forward to continue working with you. And uh, again, 
Thank you. Thank you so much on behalf of yes, us sir. and the council. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for trusting in to, and me for the, for the intro. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. I echo those same sentiments. Uh, welcome. I'm sure you do an excellent job. Oh, yes, for sure. Ms. Romo. Okay, thank you. First uh, of all, I would like uh, to thank you to and welcome uh, Mr. Favela for your first meeting as interim administrator. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And with all respect and love, I congratulate you again to my dear city of Calexico on its 114 years of incorporation. It was April 16, 1908. And I hope that our mayor, Mr. Javier Moreno, appoints the commission that will work on the 115 year celebration soon. And, and then on April 7, Councilman <coughs> Raul Ureña and I both had a work meeting with Ms. Falomir for public works to learn about the situation of all the parks that the city of Calexico has. At the next meeting on May 4, Ms. Falomir will make a general presentation of the real situation of all <coughs> parks for all of us and for the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Romo. Ms. Oranya? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'll be very, very brief with my comment just to uh, give a little bit of context to the future agenda items I'll be uh, asking for. First and foremost, I'm very happy with this council and the way that we're working. I'm very happy with interim chief, or, sorry, interim, I, I, I actually called him city chief the last time I spoke to him. <laughs> um, interim city manager, uh, Favila. I think we're, we're doing our best during this transition. Um, I want to first of all report that I sat down with our new police chief or interim police chief uh, Serrano. We had an amazing conversation. Obviously, it's no secret that there has been some friction uh, between the community, <coughs> activists, and the police department. Uh, I had a great conversation where I can genuinely say police chief Serrano had great willingness to come to the table uh, addressing hiring strategy, workload, department needs, and community engagement. I am thrilled, elated, excited uh, to be 100% committed uh, to these projects. We also talked about overarching issues that saturate the workloads of certain departments. Uh, biggest one among them is traffic. Speaking about traffic, um, I requested a meeting with Eduardo Garcia uh, to support the planning department in asking for the relinquishment of of State Route 98 and State Route 111 throughout Calexico that would give us control over those roads so we can better manage traffic in our city. I was made aware uh, that the development services in the city uh, do need some work. Uh, we are fortunately seeing a boom in development in Calexico, businesses, ADUs. A, a lot of people are excited and interested in developing here in Calexico and we do need a couple of, of positions uh, to be considered, at least for job descriptions to be written up and um, costs to be put on the table, and I'll, I'll um, list them uh, right now. Um, we need a engineering technician part-time, uh, planning and bu building analyst for the planning department, part-time inspector to alleviate uh, some of these development service needs, and the reclassification of somebody from engineering uh, to become a, a project manager, uh, as well as an executive as assistant. And lastly, uh, something that came from staff, uh, an ordinance change uh, was requested that uh, we haven't updated our ordinances. As of right now, we're still a completely quote unquote drug-free city. We haven't updated that to allow our, our employees to uh, legally use cannabis if they are not uh, required to uh, undergo uh, any testing at the federal level. So I, I would just uh, request those job description, cost estimates, and if we can put that ordinance on the table, as well as uh, status of uh, business license uh, fee schedule. And th that's my report. 
Thank, Thank you, Mr. Ranga. Real quick, is, is that for a future agenda you want to see that on the, or is it just informational? Uh, the, the ordinance uh, as an item, and then the other two are informational, the, okay. the job descriptions and the status of the business fee, fee schedule. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want to add that on a piggyback on Mrs. Romo's uh, uh, comment on the 115th year anniversary. And I, um, he and I have been having talks with uh, forming a committee. We still have a lot of time uh, to prepare for that. And I commend her for, for bringing that up. And Ms. Peter Heron, I will work with her to form a committee. If you want to join me, or I'll join you. Or, and um, we can have the citizen involved here uh, so we can have a good, good, good event and commemoration at 150 year for, for next year. It gives us enough, enough time for that. Uh, I know she's talking about a parade and all kinds of stuff like that, that perhaps you want to have something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving forward. I, now is the uh, consent agenda. So uh, cool. Second. Uh, okay, okay, motion by Ms. Ro uh, uh, Romo, second by Ms. Arriba Fernandez. Any discussion? No, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. Thank you. No items pulled from the agenda. Discussion and potential items. I want to make a motion to um, pull, uh, actually, um, items 14 through 23rd mm -hmm. to make them in one motion. I, I, I will second that, but we have to pull aside the food bank item. Since I'm currently a temporary employee, I have to abstain from, from that vote. But otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll second the motion. So you want to talk about that, Adam? Uh, no, just set, vote, vote on it separately. So I, I why don't we vote. go from 14 to 22, and then we just continue and then on? 22. Okay, yep. then, then we'll go from 14 to 22, one motion. And who seconds that? I'll second. Second, Mr. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And then we're going to item number 23, adopt a resolution of the Cedar Colexico, of the Cedar Colexico approving an intent to collaborate with Imperial Valley Food Bank in efforts to address food access needs within the Cedar Colexico. And for this item, we have our uh, planning and building uh, director, Lisa Talenda. and members of the public. Um, the item before you has been requested by the Imperial Valley, Valley Food Bank to collaborate with the city of Calexico um, in attempts to bring um, food bank uh, services and access within the city of Calexico um, on a more permanent basis. Um, the goal of this collaboration um, is to partner with the food bank on uh, potential grant applications. Um, currently, the food bank does um, four food bank operations within the city of Calexico, um, and the city currently provides services. Um, the food um, Pickup sites are usually outdoors and during daytime hours. Um, so here in our city, we experience extreme weather. So um, it would be collaboration with the food bank um, because currently it does provide services um, in the form of. Uh, street closures, traffic control, depending on the location um, of the food site pickup. Um, there is a large um, community here in our city that utilizes the services of the food bank. Um, and the, the Imperial Valley Food Bank has identified that there is a demand and a need here in the city. Um, so this collaborative effort, if approved, would allow city staff to um, be co-applicants. Of course, um, if and when that were to happen, it would come before the council for approval to submit any type of grant applications. Um, and the council would be able to give direction um, or request changes or modifications to the type of proposed projects um, that the city would be 
partnering with the food bank uh, to apply for grants and utilize the funding. Um, so it, this was initiated by the food bank, um, coming to uh, planning and building services, meeting with staff, um, requesting uh, to be co-applicants. So as we've done before with other um, nonprofits that come before and do this type of request um, to uh, go through a more transparent process, we began putting these resolutions that outline within what parameter staff can function, um, what, how long it runs, um, this one's 60 days, um, and so within the 60 days, uh, there can always be an extension, but within the 60 days, um, the intent is to um, identify grants, um, prepare them, submit them, and then wait, see if we get them. So um, the goal for this collaborative effort is to find a site that could be permanent, kind of like a food hub, um, so that the food bank can operate here and our community here um, and anyone that comes from Heber or Hopeville, they know where to go. Um, and as I mentioned, there's four sites. So they do, and that's four times a month. So they'll do their street closures and, and um, pickups by the Catholic charity, I mean, by the Catholic Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. And then they utilize the parking lot across the street uh, from Vincent Memorial High School. Um, and they do that twice a month, uh, four times a month, I'm sorry, um, at those two sites. Two times on that side, two times on this side. And um, so they requested this collaborative effort because they've gotten direction from their board um, to move forward with this type of project within our city. So we're very lucky to, to have this um, Currently, the only uh, food bank site, their actual headquarters is, is established in the city of Imperial. Um, and so it would be awesome to go into a project like this so that our community can also have an area, a place to go and know that it's there and they don't have to be looking where they're going to be closing streets and providing food pickup. Um, I think this is a good and uh, noble effort uh, and I'm very familiar with the site where they're located right now since I, I also volunteer during the pandemic, you know, I was, I was there. Um, so, so the idea is just on collaboration for now, right? But also what I'm thinking is if we go based on just having a centralized location, I think, you know, uh, what this council, at least what I have proposed many times is, you know, be close to the people. Uh, because transportation is an issue. So I know that even if we found a location, a centralized location, it's still, you know, access to transportation is an issue. And then having to carry your box of, of, of goods, I mean, it, that's an, another issue. So, or, or, or a plastic bag, well, we don't get plastic bags anymore, but, you know, what bag of, of groceries. So. I think, you know, and, and this is just, again, you know, we're talking just about a, a, a collaboration idea to collaborate, but I think, you know, maybe thinking about how to be more effective in the distribution, and it's, this is no criticism, but I, I have gotten, you know, um, calls from uh, residents that, you know, um, they can't get out of their, you know, uh, driveways because, you know, their street is blocked, you know, from cars lining up, or they were lining up. That was one concern. Um, so doing a better job of that, but having a centralized location where people have to go, I mean, that's still an issue for, for me. So if we can just work and maybe strategizing how to be more effective on distribution, at least for now, while we uh, work around, maybe you know later on with these monies, you have a centralized location, then you have a delivery service, whatever that might be. But for now, I think just working on the delivery, working on the pickup, and making sure that there's very little, um, you know, effect on, on the residents as far as the ones that are not on, in line, you know, waiting to pick up their, their um, goods. So for now, if we can work on that, 
uh, and then just, just think about how can we be more effective? How can we be on the west side of town, on the east side of town, you know, south, north? Uh, because having one location, uh, like you said, you know, it might, and it's going to be great having a hub, but having someone walk from that, you know, west side of town to the hub, if it happens to be located in downtown or any central location, it's still it's not a service. It still is a service for them to walk. So just thinking along those lines. I know I'm probably getting ahead of, you know, this, but something to keep in mind. And then also just uh, maybe, I, I, and I'm not familiar how they came about building the, the current facility. I, I, I did see a lot of, uh, when I was there, a lot of uh, thank you plaques and, and, and donations that they received from individuals, from private you know, organizations, companies. So maybe following that model, but um, I mean, this is a good uh, effort, but for now we can work just on, on the logistics of what we have going on right now and make it easier for everybody. For the individuals that receive this help, and for individuals who live around you know, the places where this, is, uh, this wood has been distributed. I think we just have to keep uh, all of them in mind. So just my two cents. So, um, I, 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 so actually right now what they're asking for is for us to collaborate. There's no money involved at this time, okay? So um, could we utilize some of our, our buildings, city-owned buildings at this point? Uh, like uh, maybe even the community center you know, because you know they could just drive through. There, there's a there's a driveway and there you know parking lot. I think that would alleviate some of the traffic. Places like that, I would I would suggest that we look into that. The city that is city owned, and we we could monitor it better. Uh, so if I may um, speak on both. Uh, I hear the direction, and that's why the collaboration is so hard. Because now we have a resolution saying we can work and, in essence, dream together. And we need to hear your direction so that we can make sure it is inputted in this process, the planning process. This is the design phase. What are we going to do? What does the city council of Calexico want for its community? And it's very exciting. Um, and it's exciting to hear the passion from the council members and from the food bank. Um, and so when you ask, can we use our facilities? It is your direction how we move forward. It is your vision. Um, so, and I'm sure the city manager can. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that <clears throat> if for, in order for that to happen, let's, let's just ensure that we follow all of the uh, requirements, the insurance, the liability. So uh, we'll look into that. We'll provide some information on that. Okay. And this and this goes to the to the sense of using city property for that. We'll have to look into that. Okay. Right. Was that any evidence Just very briefly, I, I think it's actually what Mr. Com Mr. Camilo is saying is very appropriate. It's not too far in the future. Um, I, I will say one of the advantages that we will have in the fall, uh, as a city that is just unique to us, is that ICTC Microtransit is going to come this fall. Right. So people are going to have point-to-point -point access everywhere in the city of Calexico as far as transportation. Uh, so if there's a hub, uh, people will have access to it hopefully 24-7. That's really going to be up to um, ICTC. So we're, and, and in that regard, we're kind of the city that is ripe for that kind of model. So, what's wrong? I support the, it's only about the yeah, resolution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I support. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, but it's clearly the recommendation by the city manager is to approve this resolution. Uh, I mean, just the support, it's just collaboration. Yeah, I this think is we, just like to cooperate looking, with them. Right, it's looking forward, I think we, do, we are going to have eventually those in, infrastructures in place, with the, which is a transportation hub. You know, see, I think there's a need, especially towards the west side of Calexico is underserved on this particular item. Uh, I, I myself in, in, in approval of this project. Yeah, this, this allows us to collaborate with them and start right. having these conversations. Yeah. Yes. And at this point, there's no, there's no financial impact either right now. At this, point. At this time, there is no, yeah. no. It's an intent to collaborate. Right. Okay. Yes. So move for 23. Okay, so any, any more discussion? Adopt the uh, resolution. So you make a motion to adopt the resolution. I, I Anybody second that? I'll second. Second with Mrs. Mr. Garcia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? Abstain. Abstain. Uh, opposed? Nobody? 
Do you have uh, things? No, he, he approved. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. okay, okay, thank you. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Selena. Okay. And congratulations on Pyramid Food Bank for their, their effort in yes. helping our community. Yeah. Okay, item number 24. Mm -hmm. um, we're still we're still in in, uh, in in need of uh Ms. Garcia, we still need on those on those committees that nobody has put in from. I know I've been actively involved with trying to recruit. I, I may have one by next city council meeting for the uh, police advisory board. Um, so I'll have an update on that. Uh, I don't other, other than that I don't have anybody unless we have any applicants. Uh, for me. Yeah. All right. So moving forward to uh Ms. Orena. Um, I'm also going to wait until the next uh, meeting. Okay. And then I know Mr. Romo, I think believe you have something? Yes, I appoint uh, Ms. Uh, Bachelor for Arts, Angelica Angulo, okay. as Commissioner for Library Board of Trustee. She is <coughs> here in this moment. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Yes, thank you for thank serving Colectico. Thank you. And the other personal commission is pending for the uh, first meeting in May. In May. Okay. Uh -huh. And do we, do we need uh, approval of means to vote on that? No, right, because no, it's from, from her, right? No, it's just her. It's these, are just, these are just appointments. Thank yes, thank you. All right, so moving forward to item number 27, mm -hmm. one appointment by City Council to the Parks, Recreation, Beautification, and Senior Services Commission. And we don't have that either. And what about uh, the other ones, the uh, 28 and 29? I mean, time 28. Yeah, I, item 28 was a uh, consideration uh, presented by the city council to, to request that a commissioner for the housing authority uh, be removed. Uh, this is because uh, the director, Terry Nava, was informed uh, by this commission commissioner that okay. he was uh, no longer able to serve at okay. that capacity. Okay. And uh, since he's missed a couple of his meetings, I think it'd be appropriate that we uh, remove him that way we show that we're in accordance with all the rules so th the motion for today would be to consider removing uh, mr. Roldan from the housing authority uh, commission okay and, and this by is, right by removing they still have a quorum for us right they don't yes. have an issue with yeah right okay and then also was that a borough uh, approval or was it written he turned in a letter, letter how did that so at, at first it was just a conversation okay. uh, from, the, from the director. I, I can ask her if, she, if he actually gave her something formal and that's why I wanna make sure that we do things you know, formally. So by doing this right here, we're doing our part as a city to, yeah, to, okay. Ensure, okay. to ensure okay. that we're taking the proper steps. Okay, then I, then I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll ask the, I'm sorry, yes, go ahead. Is there is there some type of procedure that they follow yeah. when when uh, like you know they miss so many days? Yes, they, or, they or have. There's a, there's a letter go out to them. I mean, yeah, I think once uh, on their rules and regs, I think once they miss three meetings, uh, they're considered not active. Okay. Okay. And I think that's the situation. Well, that is we there find a paper trail? With. That's what I'm asking. Uh, is there some type of paper trail there. I, I would have to check into that okay. on the paper trail that we're looking for, but. Um, and I think you're referencing the letter of resignation or something like that. I will make sure that we get that and um, I'll, I'll have that information. Yeah, but it seems like by, just by default, the missing three minutes automatically, I believe you don't need so. all that. I just because so. it's, right. Okay. So, so if I can, if I may, mm -hmm. so, so uh, I'm pretty sure that this is in the bylaws. Yes. But I think it will be beneficial if we can have a copy of those, at least that part of the bylaws, you know, for future. Okay. Uh, and then also maybe any attempts as she's citing that it was through emails, texts, or whatever ways of communication, because um, on this it, one particular it, item, um, or just in general commissions in general. No, 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 no. For, for this one okay. because, uh, in, in that, I don't doubt that she did, did the due diligence right, right. On, on doing this, but I just want to make sure that um, you know the attempt was made to uh, get in touch with this individual. Um, because later on, uh, we just want to make sure that we go back and reference reference any backup that was presented, you know, for the removal. Um, right. If, if you the the thing that we do have documented is the meetings, the minutes for these meetings. It shows the absence. Okay. So you of, 
You had a chance to see those minutes where yes, he was we have absent. Them. Yes. Okay. We have okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, as apologize. long as as long as someone is it's giving faith to that, or, or you attest to to that that you uh, actually saw the minutes. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, we're following the the bylaws uh, that they have. Okay. Um, do we vote on it? You know vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve the consideration by city council, actually by our city manager, right? Yes. I put a request for the health and authority, Chair Nava, yes. based on Mr. Earl Dunn's uh, absence. absence for more than three. Yes. And according to housing procedures, he therefore uh, are no longer yeah, no longer. Second. Okay. Does anyone second that? Second. Do you have a second that? And all favors? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Motion carried. Uh, 29, adopt a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the transfer of real property from the successor agency to the community redevelopment agency of the city of the city of Calexico to the city of Calexico located along 2nd Street west of Cesar Chavez Boulevard between 2nd Street and the international border, Calexico. The um, parcel number is 058-400-072, comma, and then we have 0-073 and 075. Okay, thank, thank you, Mayor. This item is going to be covered by uh, Mr. Stephen Duckett from TKE Engineering, and we have him uh, today via Zoom. Oh, no. okay. Good evening, Steve. Can you hear us? Gabby, is that you? Yes, Steve, you can proceed. Yeah, I can hear you. Is this my time or am I speaking before I'm supposed to? Yeah, no, this is your opportunity to speak on items 29, on item 29. I think you might have to tell him, Gabby. Gabby, yeah, you still there? Steve, go ahead. All right, can you hear me all right, Gabby? Okay, well, let me, let me begin. Uh, first of all, Mayor and, and Council Member, thank you for uh, lending me uh, some time to present to you two items on your agenda, uh, 29 and 30. One is for the city and one is for the successor agency. The reports are almost identical. The difference is uh, the action by the city is to uh, accept the transfer of real property and the item for the successor agency is to transfer the, the real property. The transfer would be for no cost. The property that is involved in this matter is left over uh, from a transfer that occurred uh, a few years ago with the General Service Administration for the land port of entry. Uh, originally, when the successor agency prepared the Long Rings property management plan, which dealt with um, nine different parcels around the city. Uh, the expectation was that the federal government would take the entire site number two. Ultimately, they did not wish to have the New River uh, property, and uh, so they, they acquired the balance for the land port of entry. The New River property includes the riverbed, the embankment, the pertinent areas per se, pertaining to the New River. There's a lot of detail in the staff report that I won't go over, the reason it is at that level of minutia is because these documents get reviewed first by the countywide oversight board, but then later by the Department of Finance in Sacramento, and we need to give them, them that kind of, um, of detail so they'll understand what this transaction is. As you know, the, the New River is uh, in its current uh, form has been around in its current uh, path for over 100 years. And there's no expectation it's going to change now because of the channelization that's occurred in several locations, and especially as it goes through the city of Mexicali. So this is a flood control facility. 
what's happening is that successor agencies have to sell, transfer, or otherwise um, uh, devote themselves of the properties that are in their long range property management plans to complete their obligations to shut down their redevelopment agencies. And this, among a couple of others, I'm, I'm your, um, your, I've been, I was your redevelopment consultant, and now I'm successor agency consultant. And so I've helped uh, the, the successor agency with several transactions. We have a few more to go. But this, this would take care of this particular matter. Now, if you have interest to know what, it's, it's an oddly shaped uh, property considered, consisting of three parcels, and they're shown on the exhibit B to the, the uh, grantees. And otherwise, uh, leaks are described in manners that you don't want me to say because if you're tired, you're going to go to sleep. So th that's the essence of what's before you. We do recommend that you approve this. The next step would be this matter would go to the county oversight board for their uh, concurrence and then off to the Department of Finance. And once that happens, uh, shortly thereafter, there will be uh, a transfer of the property. There's one um, a, a intermediate detail, which will be a declaration of surplus, exempt surplus land. That'll come to you after the Department of Finance has approved this matter. So that would uh, conclude my presentation. And if there are any questions, I would be very pleased to answer them. Anyone have anything? I, I do have a question. So all these parcel or parcels are free of any type of uh, issues or, or how is this process because, uh, or enlighten me with that, uh, because I wouldn't like to take, uh, you know, this, this surplus land with having any issues. Uh, most of the time they will take care of any pending issues. Is that correct? Or, or, or just if you can just speak to that. Yeah, was he able to hear that one to make sure? Gabby, was that a question? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm, I get an echo uh, at my end, so I, I, I could not understand the question. Could you help me with it, please? Uh, my question is, uh, if this land is clear of any type of uh, issues, um, whether it's environmental or any type of issues, uh, when uh, we will take over this land as a surplus land. Or, or if you can just oh, okay. speak to well, that. I, I still get, I get the echo still. So G Gabby, could you give me a summary of the question that, so I can answer it? I have placed something on the chat. I don't have access to the chat. Yeah, he, he's a... A council member, Garcia, Uh, the land involved is the New River uh, right of way, and it is, uh, I think everyone's familiar with the quality of water that uh, comes from the south, uh, although it, it has in recent years been better because it's uh, a treatment um, that uh, is currently be do being done by Mexicali. As part of this transaction, there's not an environmental assessment that's been done, although one could be done. Uh, I think the issue with the New River this is the personal opinion based upon review of matters relative to water quality is the quality of that water. Mm -hmm. So the, um, it's not potable. So it is what it is. Yeah. It, it, and and I, um, so the, it, is, it is where it is now. It's owned by the successor agency, a, 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 a separate entity, but still a, um, a, an entity underneath the city council. But I can't answer the technically what it is because we haven't it hasn't been a study. This just, just be a, a, a no cost transfer, so that it, it's outside an, an, of the long range property management plan for the successor agency, and then in the um, the ownership of the city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No. Because when you were giving your explanation, I did hear all of that, and of course, you know, knowing the answer to that too, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if this is just for a lack of a better word, a technicality, pretty much that we got it, we have to take over this land, uh, regardless of the condition that it is, and, and we don't have, uh, uh, I mean, it's not that we don't have other option, but it's just a technicality for us to, you know, get the surplus land in the state that it is uh, now, and just move on. Pretty much it's, it's that, uh, that's what we're doing here. 
Okay, uh, Gabby, can you help me with that, please? I, I can answer that one. That, that's a yes. Okay. It's a, this is a uh, procedural. He's asking if um, basically this transaction is a technicality in order to transfer the land from the beach. Yeah, the regardless of the, the condition of the land. So just the the yes, it is, a, it, is a te it is a technicality. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. It, do, it does not decrease the exposure of the, uh, of the city other than to say this. This land is not developable. Okay. Because it's in a river channel. Yeah. If it was just a flood control facility only, I think it could be encased within a channel. But this is um, this is a riverbed, okay. so it gets treated differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it is everyone knows what it is. I remember the days when I started um, uh, working with um, the city of Calexico, which is back in 2007. The water coming across from Mexicali was foaming. It doesn't do, at least the last time I was there, I didn't see any foam. So I, and I read up on that, so I understand why that's not the case. So I, I would say a, a level of diligence needs to continue. And there may, in fact, be additional efforts being done by Mexicali to um, clean the water, and I, they should encourage to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? No. 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 Nope. Okay. Uh, anybody make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Anybody second that? Second. Second by Mr. Romo. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, no one opposed. Okay. Thank you. Motion carried. Item number. Uh, well, we're actually a collective redevelopment successor agency. Item number thirty. Adopt a resolution mm -hmm. authorizing the transfer of real property located along West Second West Street west of Cesar Chavez yeah. Boulevard between Second Street and International Border, California. Calexico, California, mm -hmm. parcel number 058-400-072, comma, dash 073, and dash 075. Which is basically the same, right? Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? No. No. Nope. You make a motion, Ms. Romo, who mm -hmm. seconds that? Mrs. Noreña seconds that? Seconded. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Motion carried. Five all. Uh, next item is future items, agen uh, uh, agenda items. I yeah. wanted uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Terry Navat from the uh, Housing Authority, the, the, our director there, come and give a presentation. I think the last time she was here, mm -hmm. back in December, I think it was. Okay. Um, perhaps as we're, we're do a, a, a kind of like an update what's been going on in terms of the uh, housing al al uh, allocations mm -hmm. for, for the Housing Authority. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. That's your next deal. Anybody? Okay. I, okay. I submit the, uh, Mr. Favela, submit the budget for the repair, repair of fire station number two, please, for the next uh, meeting. And you, you, uh, you're asking for a update on the fire station two? Yeah. Okay. Please. And second. I pour a mayor is uh, submit the budget for the repair the restaurant building and it's possible at least and other present by Mr. Jerry Arguelles a plan uh, to build hangar, uh, hangares, uh, is, uh, hangars se dice? Hangar? hangares for the airport yes uh -huh. and presentation by Ms. Falomir on the situation of all the parks in the city of Calexico, submit to the Cabildo the new regulations on commissions. Also, present a cal calendar, calendar, or calendar of, com of committee meetings. And finally, Mr. Favila, do you have any information about the loans we are going to give to the small business that uh, apply for the next meeting, please? What yes, is the situation? Uh, I, I think if we can have Lisa, do you want to explain the process that See, we're going Lisa. through with, with uh, for the small loans? Okay. Are we going to do now or for future? Oh, this is for a future? Did you want it right now? Uh, no, 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 in the future. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. In the next meeting, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yes. It was posed as a question, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I have several yes. calls for this. That's it, Mr. Romo? Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just want an update on, on the uh, 
work being done over at 98 where do we stand i know that they came down uh, a few months ago but i think you know it has been stalling and, and for different reasons you know that we were given but nonetheless you know that hasn't helped you know alleviate some of that yeah, issues that we're having and then the businesses that are there located i think they're being also very uh you know they're impacted so we can get just uh, an update on that chief if you can just okay. uh look into that whether we have someone from uh caltrans so if you can just get an update for us okay that would we'll be that. really um appreciated so that that's that's it for me thank you mr Garcia. sorry love no i don't know right no. okay I, 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 yes, just, I, I was just going to clarify uh, mine for, for the record, if, if it's Please. helpful. Um, so the, the ones on the positions, those are mainly uh, uh, things that Lisa would be able to, to answer. Uh, just for the record, it would be a budget amendment proposal just to see how much it would cost with a proposed job description for part-time engineering technician, mm -hmm. part-time inspector, planning and building analyst, and two reclassifications. One of uh, the current engineer, um, Ivan Rodriguez, mm -hmm. if he could be reclassified as a project manager to take on a couple more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And then the reclassification uh, for an internal executive as assistant for uh, engineering department. Good, second. Um, the second one is, um, since we allocated, uh, I think it was a million dollars for the IT uh, category of ARPA. There's a certain software for development uh, that costs about $103,000. I wanted to see if that, uh, as a legal question, can come out of that ARPA budget. Um, where do, the, do you have the name of this of this program? I think Lisa had it. Lisa, okay. what, what's, the, what's the name of the program? Okay, so just just in, in general, explore uh, our, uh, an RFP for a land management program, um, uh -huh. and if it can come from ARPA, of course. Uh, fees, uh, the business license fees, that would come from Lisa and Sandy, uh, the status of, of that fee update. And then lastly, uh, the ordinance on... Do, on real quick, that's, yes? that's the fee schedule, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the last one is uh, with, le uh, with legal, uh, proposing a change of the drug-free uh, ordinance uh, so that it's updated to reflect that as long as city employees are not required by federal law to be, be drug tested, that they are allowed to use uh, cannabis and should not fear a drug test as uh, city employees. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay, that I think that'll, that's it, right? Uh, okay. I move to adjourn, it, it's 8, uh, 820, anybody second on? Second. Second by Ms. Lorena, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, you can adjourn. Thank you.